This perfect conference tarot. will now be recorded. We'll be perfectly thorough in Git so that you can clear any interview questions on Git and also you can work with Git in your projects. Right? That's a, those are the two pointers I keep in mind when we cover our topic. So let's begin. So what is a version control system? So anyone who are already using version control system or who know what a version control system is? Anyone? Uh, what is a it, it's used to track like the changes that you make on your classes. Okay, uh, classes, you mean the files, right? The files, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, version control system. Let me uh, begin with uh, what it does. So what a version control system does version control system is something which can help you track or maintain versions of your files. Okay, it will maintain the versions of the files. It will maintain the backup of the files. Okay, it will help you have the uh, like it will help you allow multiple people working on the files. Multiple people can work on the same file at the same time so that the team can collaborate well. So how is this possible? What does it mean actually and which files are this? First of all, these files are any files. OK, like any program files. It might be C, uh, C program files or a dot net like a C sharp program files or PHP files or simply some configuration files or else shell script files, simply some configuration files, right? Or else simple text files also can be version control. Any static files can be version controlled. So obviously you understand who uses it. Yes, developers uses it. It is mandatory for a developer. The developer might be writing the code in C, C sharp or a Python or a Perl, whatever it is, because they definitely write some programs, right? This version control system can help them maintain versions, maintain backup of the files. What is maintain, meant by maintaining versions? What is meant by backup? All of them I'll elaborate. Please listen, okay? So yes, developers will mandatorily use it because they need to maintain versions of their code. It's mandatory for them. And also, yes, testers are also using it because testers do write some test cases, automation test scripts, right? So their scripts, so their files should be version control. Please keep muted unless you have a question. Requesting everyone, please keep muted. If you have a question, yes, unmute and speak up. Thanks, thanks everyone. So developers use it, testers use it. So now how DevOps person should use a DevOps person will not write the code. He don't write the code, but yeah, we have some configuration files. We have some script files like Ansible files will be there. We need to version control them. We have Kubernetes files, Terraform files, all those scripts, all those uh, files should be version controlled, right? So even DevOps person needs Git. I'm talking about now I'm talking about it from the perspective of managing the files. Okay, means like, okay, let's say I'm working with Ansible. I have some configuration, some Ansible playbooks. I need to version control them. So definitely I'll use it. So today or else first we'll learn Git from the perspective of managing our files, version controlling our files, backing up our files. Okay, then we'll talk about how to use git in the CICD pipeline. Okay, that also we'll talk about it. So let's begin. So uh, what is meant by versioning? Okay, we said, okay, fine. Files will be version control. Backup of the files were done. Multiple, it will allow multiple people working. How is this possible? Let's see. Let's take a very simple scenario. Okay, this scenario I'm talking about without using version control system. Okay, let's say, okay, I'm not using any version control system. Okay, we are not using any version control system and we have our code base on some remote server. Okay, this is a remote server where we have a code base. Code base is nothing but, okay, let me make it more simple for beginners. Okay, this is nothing but a location or a, a server or where you have all the files of your project. Now there are two developers or DevOps person or two testers because anyone entering in IT should learn Git. So yeah, you may consider these persons as developers or DevOps persons or whoever it is. Let me say DevOps person because we are into DevOps. Okay, so there are two DevOps person. 
a want to modify a file modify some terraform config file with extension .tf okay he downloaded his this file to his system okay at the same time b also downloaded another devops person also downloaded this file a made some changes to this file and put the file back isn't it he have to put the file back in project location so he could put the file back on let's say day one so b is still making the changes to the same file and then b put the file back to the remote location on day two so now tell me this file is going to have which person changes finally finally which person changes will be there on in this file Yes, I think simple logic. I'm talking about without person. Without person. Yep. Person yep. B. Person B changes. Why person B changes? What is happening? B is overriding the changes of A, isn't it? B's changes were overriding the changes of A. Here we don't. We are not using any version control system. So B changes are overriding the person A changes, correct? So if this keep on going, B doesn't know that he is overriding A's changes. Similarly, A doesn't know his changes are being overwritten, right? So if this continues, if this keep on going, what happens? The project goes corrupted. Project gets messed up at some state. Am I correct? Project goes corrupted. Project goes messed up at some point of time. Because this, this is happening unknowingly. The, no one knows this is happening. So how to avoid this problem? So that's where a version control system comes in. Version control system is something which can help people work simultaneously, parallelly at the same time on the same file. Means use version control system. A may even be working on the same file. B may be working on the same file. But it will not override one person changes with that. Because see, we are DevOps persons or we are maybe developers may be using it, testers may be using it. They concentrate on working with the files, making changes to the files, right? They have some other requirements to work on. They just cannot keep track of which person changes, which person changes are overriding my changes. This kind of maintenance a person cannot do manually, right? There comes a need of a system called version control system which will allow people working on the same file simultaneously or parallelly, right? It will take care of it because this cannot be done manually, right? So version control system will take care of it. That's one thing. Another thing is, okay, let's say something uh, went wrong. Okay, the project got uh, messed up or the project the application got crashed. Immediately, we want to find out the issue and remove the changes which is causing this crash how is this possible i repeat i'll repeat the scenario suppose there is an application okay the code for the application is placed on uh, like on, on a remote server something went wrong and the application crashed application crash means business goes down right something went with the file some configuration file was modified something went wrong immediately it should be uh, reverted it should be brought back right so that the application will be up and working again so how to do this how can we find out what happened again version control system comes in because version control system maintains logging i believe you all know what is meant by logging you the have changes, yeah yeah you have a history of which person made changes to which file at what time if the the history should be so detailed like okay person a made changes on um main.tf file okay on line number nine at 8 30 pm ist so this kind of detailed history if you have okay application work could find till 8 uh, 25 pm okay application is not working from 8 35 pm so what happened in between? So this kind of logging, this kind of detail history, can we provide manually without version control systems? Yeah, yes, that's again taken care by version control system. Isn't it? So you know, okay, this change was made at 8.30, remove these changes, so the application will be back and running, right? 
it's so simple otherwise there might be some hundreds of configuration files if you don't have this kind of logging you don't know which file was modified who modified it right you can easily track the person who made the blunder that is another important feature correct so all these are the um, things which a version control system can help you with not only this lot many things okay i'm just here listing out the main features so that you can understand why you should learn version control this stuff right so um yeah let's take up another scenario maintaining or i mean more making changes simultaneously logging and then um uh, yeah backup of the files okay let's say okay you are working on some file tf file some terraform config file okay you are making changes and it's a version one there's a client requirement client came and they just want to modify this file and make it version 2 okay with some modification okay you have overwritten the file or deleted this and made a new file and made this okay after a few months client just want to go back to version 1 because version 2 is not working fine so but you deleted it or you have overwritten the same and made v2 so if you want to bring it back again rework don't ever delete the older versions right always have backups don't overwrite don't delete the older version. maintain the versions okay when you're making a change keep the old file as it is as a version one keep a version two that's what is maintaining the backups right all of this is taken care by version control system so everyone even a developer of course it's a life for developers because they always have huge number of program files Nowadays, even DevOps person need it, testers anyway, they do need it, right? Hope you got the importance why we are learning. We have some configuration files, script files, all of them should be version controlled. You need a login, you need to have a backup. So that's what a version control system does. I believe you got a first answer. Why do you need a version control system and what is a version control system? So version control systems actually were categorized. Okay, depending on the architecture, they were categorized as centralized version control system and distributed version control system. Based on their architecture, they were categorized. Okay, the functionality, everything is same. First, let me give you some examples of version control systems. Git, SVN, TFS, Perforce, these are all some of the version control system. There are many version control system, but Git is the market leader. It is very widely used, particularly for the modern DevOps projects. Okay, the latest more, uh, DevOps projects are refer, preferring Git because of its strong branching feature, because of its robust uh, branching strategies you have. And right, what is this branching feature and all we'll discuss. So this is a market leader. If you know working with it, maybe let's say there is some remote or small project where they are using <clears throat> some SVN. Easily you can switch to it. Don't try to learn every tool under the category because they are similar. Okay, when you know Git, yeah, you can easily switch. They are similar. The concepts are similar. The terms may be different. Okay. So yeah, these are different tools. Now based on the uh, architecture, they were categorized. Again, distributed version control systems are used, like I said, in the modern DevOps projects. Git comes under this distributed architecture. SVN comes under centralized. SVN, TFS, okay. Perforce also comes under centralized. Then Git, Fossils, Mercurial. These comes under distributed architecture. Clear till this much, everyone. Any questions in this part? Anyone speaking? Yeah, all clear, ma'am. Thank you. All oh, right, thanks. So now, yeah, let's talk about the architecture of centralized version control system before going to distributed architecture so that you could really appreciate the importance of distributed architecture. To understand the benefits, to understand the advantages, you should also know the problems with centralized. So let's go. So we already discussed what is a version control systems. So they were categorized as centralized version control system and distributed version control system. Coming to the centralized, see here. 
So in centralized uh, version remote repository or the central repository, okay, where all the project work, all the code bases. And these are the workstations of each individual DevOps person. DevOps person one, person two, person three. Each person will connect to this remote repository, get, get the change, get the code, make the changes and put it back. That's all is a centralized version control system. It's very obvious it poses two main challenges. First thing is you can, by seeing the diagram, you can understand the challenges. Network connectivity. Always you need to have network connectivity to connect to this remote server. If for some reasons network is down, network is uh, um, disconnected, entire work will be halted. Right? You cannot work on it. That's the first drawback, first challenge. Second thing is, for some reasons, if the central server is crashed or lost or something happened to it, chances of recovery are very less. Why? Because it works like a single source of truth. All the changes were here, that's it. So if this is lost, yes, chances of recovery are less. So these are the drawbacks with the centralized version control system, which can be overcome by distributed version control system architecture. So let's proceed. Let's proceed with the distributed architecture. Yes. So if you see here, yes, again, you have got remote server or central server here in distributed version control system. OK, this is the workstation of each individual person DevOps person or developer, whatever we consider. So this is the workstation of each DevOps person. And every DevOps person will have a copy of the remote repository, which is called local repository. See this? Okay, this is a copy of central repository, which is called local repository. I repeat, in distributed architecture, we have two repositories, central repository or local repository. And the other one is, <clears throat> sorry, I'm sorry, central repository or remote repository. And this is called local repository, which resides, which sits on the developer system, developer's workstation or DevOps person workstation. Each person will have a copy of remote. So how they make changes? Again, they don't make changes on this. Rather, they'll make changes on working copy means some other directory called working directory. So they make changes on some other directory, move them to local. From local, it will be moved to remote. It's not straight away. From local to remote you have to push to move your changes to remote you have to pull to get a copy from remote right so it's a two step like actually from working directory to local from local to remote you cannot directly do this no that's not possible okay so this is the architecture and this is how it works so how come it overcomes the drawbacks of centralized architecture yes because see you don't need network connection always you need network connection only to pull or push. These are less frequently used because we work on here mostly once complete work is done, we push, isn't it? Only once you push your changes, others can see your changes. If the changes are here, it's confined only for yourself. If you want to put it in the project, if you want to share it with others, you have to push to remote. So these commands are less frequent. Majority of the time you work here, here you are working means you are just accessing your hard disk, which is quite faster. Right? Also, the working with distributed version control system is faster and compared with centralized because of this reason. So even though network is disconnected, you still can continue working here. Entire work is not halted. You can start making changes here. Only to push or pull, you need the uh, version control system. Am I clear? Right? So that's yes. one thing. The second thing is, even though the central server is crashed or lost for some reasons, you can still have a backup because everyone is having a copy of it. Recovery, chances of recovering or is also more. Got the differences, everyone understood? A question from Shahan Shah, can you explain one more time about centralized version control system? Okay, I'll do. Before that, any questions in this distributed architecture? 
Chahan Shah yes, understood sir. the distributed architecture one question first. Hmm. Yeah. So uh, one question we is while Hello. Thank you. Tell me, please. Yeah. While while we take the local repository, this local repository will contain only one or two branches. Or will the local repository be cloning the whole server? So, for example, if the Git's repository on the server is very huge, uh, if we take the local, it will clone the whole whole repository to our local, or only one branch, or whatever you we are can cloning. Clone, you can clone the entire repository, or you can also do partial clone. Also possible. Depends on your requirement. Okay, and and what is the usual uh, usual uh, thing that happens? Let's say, for example, our server is working, and uh, server is lost somehow. And we want to re uh, recover the data from repository. See, you, you told us that that uh, central gets failed uh, easily, right? So no, uh, central doesn't get failed easily. In case if it is lost, right? Other repositories, other other persons will have a copies, right? See, when you clone the repository completely, yes, it can be recovered from you. Or else, other persons might have the copy. Chances of recovering is more. Okay. Okay. Got it. So this is the distributed version control system. And some of you are asking about um, the centralized architecture. Let me show you. So what is the centralized? See, you don't have a local system. I mean, local repository. You just have a remote repository. Okay. This is the remote repository, central repository. Everyone should connect to it and work on it. That's all is a centralized version control system. You don't have a local repository for a backups or else you always need to have get connected to the remote to work on. Shahan Shah, any questions here? Can you please confirm? <coughs> I mean, uh, suppose if it should be work on network only, right? Uh, if drop network, what will happen? Yeah, that's what are the drawbacks I already mentioned we discussed, right? If network connection is not there, entire work will be halted. That's a drawback of the system. And chances okay. of recovering are less. If this is lost, entire repository is lost because we don't have a backups. It's work like single source of root. Uh, and just one more ex one more time about a distributed system. No, not one more time, just. Distributed is every person is having a uh, his own workstation. Every person will have a copy of remote repository. Okay, this is called local repository. Every person is having a copy of remote, which is called a local repository. And he'll be working here and then move the changes to remote. So in this case, even though network is disconnected, you still can work here on local. Entire work is not halted. You need network connections only to push and pull. Actually, you are working here. So network connection is disconnected, but still you can work here. Entire work is not halted, like in the case of centralized version control system. And yeah, even though the central server is lost because everyone is having a backup, chances of recovering goes more. Maybe I can recover from here, from here, whichever person has got a complete copy. Got it, madam. Thank you. Any more questions on these uh, decentralized and distributed? So yeah, you can see the graph, uh, Google trend reports. You can check the graph now also. This is a graph taken on 2020. Maybe you can also get the latest graph of 22. Git is very widely used. You can see the blue graph. Do you see the blue one when compared with this VNTFS or fossils? Git is very widely used. So obviously you should learn Git so that you have more job openings, more uh, what do you say? More scope of using it in the project, right? So yeah, if you learn it, yes, you are mastering the version control system concepts. Now, yeah, we have understood the architecture of distributed version control system. Now let's talk about the architecture of Git in particular. So, like I said, every distributed version control system will have to. Yes, this is the local repository. Let's say this is my laptop. This is my workstation okay so yeah we i have got copy of this local repository like i said i don't work directly on this local rather i work on this working directory 
okay i'll work on this working directory make the changes and working directory is, let, let's say some other directory or else a folder from here i cannot push my changes like this to local then what i should do i should be pushing my changes back i mean i should be pushing my changes to some other layer called staging area do you see this staging area i have to push them to staging area what is the staging area staging area is nothing but a virtual layer or a virtual area okay you don't see it's not a physical directory it's a virtual layer which sits between working directory and local repository and which provides or which acts like a preview or else uh, what do you say it's like a pretest before you move your changes to local means it will help you to control to have a good control on the changes which are going to local means let's suppose in staging area uh, or else in working directory you have 10 files you just want only five files to put in local so yeah you move only those five files to staging whatever in the staging area will be moved here so that you have a better control on what changes you are moving to local you will understand this i'll do, uh, in few minutes in some five minutes we are getting to lab so that you will understand you will practically see what is the staging area and all but now understand yes it's like it provides you all like a preview or else a, a pre-check before your you move your changes to local right it and also it gives you a good control on managing the changes which changes should go to local okay so first you move to staging area then from staging area only you have you can move to local you cannot just move from staging to remote no not possible you have to go only in this direction am i making sense you have to go only in this direction so then from local to remote so it's like a three steps first step second step third step it's like a three steps before you move your changes to remote this is called git tree okay or else git architecture whatever you call it. it's a git tree three steps before your changes goes to remote okay what is git commit what is git add these commands so many commands we are going to learn so don't worry about them just understand the concept i repeat yes every person will have a local repository on their workstation on their laptop so when they make changes they don't make changes directly here they make changes in some directory move them to staging then to local once you move to local okay you want to share with others you want to publish it in the project you move to remote unless until you move to remote no one else can see your changes this is your own changes confined only for yourself right understood the architecture that's all is the architecture is this much clear I'm going point by point so that you should not have any confusions. So see, Git is very interesting tool and it is also tricky. Means for a beginner, it may sound a bit confusing or it may sound a bit complex. But once you actually learn it in a proper way, in a proper structured way, okay, understanding the concepts, you can play with Git. So yeah now that you understood okay how you move your changes how you move your files lay uh, to a version control system let me tell you few pointers here first thing is how is local repository created in two ways one is yes let's let's take a use case okay you are working in a project or else let's say okay you join the project now okay it's a six year old project already the code base is there on remote so many developers so many devos persons are connected to it they were working on it now you join the project okay it's a six year old project now yeah you need to get a copy so you get a you create a local repository in your system by copying from remote this is one use case the other use case is okay you joined a company it's a new project completely new project developing from scratch there's nothing on remote so what do you do you create empty local repository manually lr means local repository so manually you create a local repository develop the changes there then push to remote create remote repository that's another use case understood these two use cases everyone any confusions questions here
yeah all good okay so now we will be you know, like i said we'll be going to our server we'll be installing gate we'll be first taking up this scenario okay we'll be taking up this use case then later on we'll also go to this use case so keep in mind we'll be creating local repository manually assuming it's a new project so this is one thing you have to note another thing is okay here coming back to this yes i said working directory is some other directory staging area is like a virtual layer local repository is some other folder or else if you are a linux person directory or a folder in linux we call it as a directory if you are a windows person it's a folder let me tell you the actual truth here strictly speaking these two directories actually are the same then you may be asking then why are you saying working directory some other directory local repository some other directory physically they are same it's the same one and the same folder let's say take some folder in your windows this is your local repository the same is your working directory yes that's true um local repository working then how come you say working directory from working directory you push to staging and all physically they are same logically they are different what is meant by that let me tell you let me put a big folder okay this is your local repository also working how come you say the same folder is local let me tell you suppose you just created a file a config file you just created a file means you just kept a file in this directory in this folder or you just created a file in this directory then you say yes the file is in the working directory relate to this architecture like that suppose you make some changes to this config file okay like i made some changes to this configuration file okay then then suppose you add it to staging area by running git add this config file then the file is set to be in the staging area okay then later on you go and commit the file git to commit that particular file then you say yes that is in the local repository physically it's the same folder logically it's different it's one and the same folder if you just simply put the file and leave it it's set to be in the working directory after that if you add it in the to the staging area it's called it's in the staging area then if you commit then only you say it's in local then only you can push to remote got it now sounds interesting isn't it or else confusing if it is confusing let me know i can repeat and i can make it clear yes madam can you come back once again madam okay see uh, i am saying this working directory local repository is one and the same directory means physically same it's a folder it's a directory in your system it's a same directory physically same logically different how is that see in that folder if you just created a file okay you just created some notepad or else you just created some text uh, text file or else you just created some cf whatever it is you just created the file there that's all you didn't do anything means it is said to be in the working directory after that if you add the file means if you run this command git add that file name then it goes into staging you say okay the file is in staging area then if you run this command git commit that cfg file then it is said to be in local you say okay now the file is in local repository but physically it's in the same box See, it's in the same directory logically this is how it is different when you run the commands git add yes it, we call okay it is in staging area if you do git commit okay then we say okay it's in the local repository see i'm explaining you theoretically what happens now in few in couple of minutes i'm going to show all of this with a hands on so that you can relate to what i just have explained now understood now yeah got clear it madam clear madam thanks madam so just just remember these pointers okay note them uh, keep in your mind now we'll go to the lab and practically i'll demonstrate i'll show you what i have uh, said now right so yeah let's begin with the hands on now
So let us install Git and tell, let me tell you one more thing. Git works the same way either it is in Windows or Linux or whatever operating system or it is in Mac. Git works the same. The concepts are same. The commands are same. Okay, so now we'll start Git on Windows the same way you can work it on Linux. I can show you that also as we progress with the course. So first let us install Git. So how do you install Git? Just go to Google and type in git download see don't save the links maybe official websites are there but don't save the links rather learn the process how to do it because the links the references may be changed keep on changing so if you know this process yes you get to the right link easily in your company also if you want to install this is how you do git download then you will see the official documentation git scm.com don't save this link because they might be modified. We don't never know. So this is the process. Anyway, the links are also there in the notes. I'll share you. Don't worry. See here. Do you want to download it on Mac or Windows or Linux? This document is like a Bible for Git. You can refer to it for anything you need regarding Git. We want to do it on Windows. So just click here. See, depending on your 32-bit system or 64-bit, you can download. It's an executable. It's an exe file. Okay, I have already downloaded it. What you should do after downloading it, run the exe. I believe you all know downloading and running the exe. Do you all know that? Yes. Yeah, just download the exe and run the exe. But still, anyone looking for help? Yes. See here, this is the documentation you will be having. I think whoever enrolled got this documentation. So, yeah. Uh, here is the documentation. Okay, what you should do go to this link download it. It's an EA executable will be downloaded like this. See this colorful icon executable. Just double click it. Okay, you will be navigated to all these steps. You just click on yes, next and so on. That's all. Just keep, keep on clicking next on every screen on that wizard. Okay, so you will be navigated finally and uh, yeah, you will be. Oh, uh, yeah. So go to all this standalone and portable. Huh? Uh, standalone and portable it's coming when i click like download for windows yes you just download the executable and run it that's it run the executable and go through this wizard by clicking next button anyway including the screenshots also there in this document if you need any help you can also click on this i mean you can also refer this right is there also so, for mac huh mac for mac version mac, mac another another link you have you have to go through this like i have shown you if it is mac go here and follow the steps you can run this command brew install git okay uh, do we need to download from standalone or portable madam standalone you mean both are same this one you have to just click this and you have to oh you mean this one down standalone or portable this just yeah, standalone. Yes, that's what go for standalone see that's what if you, if you have any such questions here are the answers okay you can also refer this and go for the standalone part and yeah you just uh, go through these steps you get git installed and whenever you install git on your windows you will also get something called git bash do you see how to launch git in windows okay it is installed see here click on finish how to launch it just go to the start menu okay i'm showing you and here run the command git bash do you see that so this black window you can see which is nothing but a git bash what is this git bash this provides some shell environment or bash environment to work with okay now see this is a bash what is meant by bash environment a shell environment okay a linux environment i believe you all know in windows also you can work with a command line right what i mean is just give me a minute yeah so in windows how do you open any folders you just go here windows has got a gui suppose i want to just open any folder you double click and you open the folder right and if you want to create any files you just right click 
okay you just go to new folder right or else any file this is how you you create a folders and files am i correct new file or new uh, document word document this is how we do from the gui right rather than gui you can also use cli in windows command line this is more preferable because when you work on projects we, rather than using gui you should be used to using cli using cli cli is similar to linux because in linux operating system also you don't have gui you open files folders you work with the file system from the command line so practice here itself suppose i just want to go to my desktop okay just how do you do just copy that you just go this way through gui but always prefer cli i'll explain you the benefits of using cli later so this is how you go cd means change directory put that path enter so see here it shows yes you are on desktop you are on desktop means your terminal is point to desktop okay i want to see what are all present on desktop ls ls means it will list all the files and folders like this okay there is index.zip index.html sh keys folder uh, some uh, visual studio code references are there some browser is there some these are all folders okay so this is how it is listing some pdf is there it will list means cd a small command change directory ls list the files and folders of that directory these are the small commands in linux also okay that's how you work in linux so let's get used it this way if you want you can just go to gui and also do it but i prefer this way until you get used you can do it from gui am i making sense or is it confusing don't get confused okay this is some additional stuff i am showing okay now yeah we want to create a local repository on git first to do everything on git i'm going to create a directory mkdir means make directory it will create a new directory called git demo see if you don't want this no worries just go like this create a folder this way like how you do okay that's perfectly fine so i'm creating directory so ls a directory should be there uh, where is it yeah this one you may also see from here okay what i'll do is because if anyone is new to this to avoid any confusions and to make the things very clear let me put it sideways okay so that you can see the back end yeah this is the folder created okay fine i want to go to that folder what should i do how to go into this folder from the command line on the gui i'll double click but from the command line how to go uh, i want cd yeah please be interactive please respond i want to hear answers from every uh, you can do cd and then go to the folder pd means change directory git demo you may be knowing it some of you so please feel free to respond just this is a way to interact yeah cd that particular git demo now i am on git demo ls nothing because that's an empty directory okay now i did this from the command line okay fine so that's a directory so now in this git demo means this get demo is a directory where i want to put all my project files all my uh, configuration files as a devops person listen carefully now i'm talking about git so here i just want to place all my program files and make this a local repository assume that it's a new project okay we are a team of uh, 10 people okay we are working in the project so uh, it's a new project there's nothing on remote i told you two use cases right Create local Git repository manually. How to do that? Git init. Okay, Git init means initialize Git, start Git. See, we have installed Git on this system. On my laptop, Git is installed. But which directory Git should version control, you have to tell. Isn't it? There might be 100 folders in my system. Which directory Git should version control? Which directory is your project? So go to that directory because this is a directory git should be version controlling all the files in this directory because that's where i'm going to put my config files so do git in it git is initialized empty git repository means do ls it will not show any files if you want to see hidden files ls minus l 
sorry ls minus sorry ll minus al long list and hidden files see here dot get can you see it's a hidden folder see here you can see at the back end it's a hidden folder hidden folder is there dot get so whichever directory whichever folder is having dot get that's a local repository see now i'm going to desktop now tell me out of all this directory which directory is local repository everyone i want answers from everyone which is a local repository git repository here a uh, git hyphen demo git demo folder so, okay fine let's say i want to make this php database folder as a local repository see it has also dot git do you see so this is also local repository am i correct every one of you i want answers from each and every one because see, yeah. these concepts should be very clear and should be strong you should identify which is a local repository which is not if you see some folder it's not version controlling people struggle for it first of all it should be a local repository so yes dot git is there php db is also local repository so is this ssh keys folder also local repository i'm struggling no. i want to control them no. what should i do is this also local repository no no so if i want to version control all these files what should i do in this folder uh git in it git in it i should go to this folder do git in it then it becomes version control i mean the local repository then all these files can be version controlled i think i made the point clear yeah so yes i made a new local repository right okay fine but there are no files here yeah let's create some files okay now coming to the files we are a devops person you may be creating some ansible files terraform files kubernetes files prometheus config files whatever but for now because we didn't go and created those files for now we'll be creating a small text files and learn how to version control them okay if you know version controlling a text file or any file is same okay now let's create a file you may create a file from the command line also you have touch commands i'll teach them later or else for now as a beginning do it from the gui right click create a new text file this windows 11 is making things so complex to create a text file also how to create a text file oh yeah text document <sighs> file1.txt yep okay so some text file is created but there is no content right let me put some content here i mean let me put some line i'm just putting here this is a some dummy line okay it might be some c program by developers or it might be some config files for uh, ops teams whatever this is a sample text file okay and save it okay this is a simple text file okay one file is there i do ls yes i can oh i have given extension show more it could be anything but let me make it clean okay that is enough okay so find one dot t clear will clear the terminal means it will make the screen clear okay ls i have the file uh, so now tell me it's in local repository means this git demo is nothing but your local repository the same folder git demo is nothing but your working directory so i just created a file can you tell me where is this file as per the architecture refer always this architectural diagram this diagram should be kept in your mind and now tell me where is the file is it in working directory or staging area or local repo physically it's in the same directory but tell me locally. working directory everyone has to working directory see physically it's in the same directory but logically it's in working directory but okay let's say i don't know i'm confused i don't know where it is can, how can we know it run the command git status it will tell you everything ignore these two for now branching we'll learn later come here untracked file untracked file and it says add the file to get tracked see it's giving clue nothing to be uh, nothing added to commit but untracked file use git add 
it is asking me to git add so it is asking me to git add means where is the file simple logic where is the well it's asking me to add it working directory. working directory so that's how you can understand the meaning of untracked file is okay git knows there is a file okay git understood okay file is a but it cannot track it okay for new files it will be shown as untracked this could be another interview question what is meant by untracked file in git untracked file means a new file which is not added which is in the working directory that could be a simple interview question but that shows your experience whether you understood the concepts whether you have used git thoroughly or not simple question right so git is in the working directory okay fine i want to add it i want to get to version control it so what is the command git add file name so just run the command see physically again it's same see at the back end it's not moving anywhere logically yes it moved how do you know just run git status see earlier the commitment uh, earlier the message is untracked but now the message is changes to be committed changes to be committed means where is it refer the diagram you don't need to confuse put this diagram in your mind so changes to be committed not yet committed staging. what does it mean where is it it is in the staging, staging area obviously staging right? area. yeah staging area. it is also giving you clue changes to be committed okay fine i'll commit it clear the screen now git commit minus m m means message message flag is mandatory you should provide some commit message why we we'll learn that also in couple of minutes let's say first file some message because see whenever you make a commit a commit id will be generated commit id is alphanumeric unique it's a hash code and later point of time if you want to identify okay what happened in this commit means okay first file created so you should give some reasonable message here like in a project okay you modified main.tf file you should say okay main.tf file is modified to include new server something like that so that you understand the, by the message it's like a comments to help you understand what these changes are made for now done yes it says one file is created and now check the status working tree is clean working tree is clean means it doesn't mean that your file is gone and it's clean okay it means that whatever changes are there were committed okay that's clean now if you want you can push to remote but pushing to remote we learn later because before going to this remote we have lot many things to master here okay then we'll push to remote before that there are lot many things we need to master here so understood the concept how your changes work shall i repeat it with the different with another file so that uh, whoever having any confusions should be clear shall i repeat with another file yes ma'am let us repeat with oh. some other file so that you should be having one doubt madam i mean okay. uh, how to create repo madam that's what uh, for starting i just confusion so remaining all things got clear you create a local repository by going into the folder and running git init command all these commands will be there in the drive okay when you do hands on you have all these commands here you can refer and do it don't worry about i don't remember the command should i copy it or should i memorize it just relax and listen but after the class definitely do the hands on okay see here this is for linux so ignore it and yeah creating a directory going into the folder in that folder again i have created subfolder that there i have done git in it okay here i have created index of files html files vim is an editor vim editor i'll teach you later you create from the ui for now so that you will first learn git then you will see command line okay uh, got it uh, someone asked understood whoever asked this git in it command any folder already there might be files if you want to version control it go there and do git in it so all right now let us repeat this with another file by the way ls will show the files in a working directory 
git ls files will show the files in local repository that's another way to identify which file is in local which file is in working directory so let me create one more file i am using touch command touch will create a file from the command line if you want you can create that see at the back end do you see so file yes. is created if you want to edit it just you can open how to edit from the command line also i'll teach you in the coming up classes for now just create like this this is second file save it close it now okay i have two files now tell me ls is showing two files git ls files why git ls file is not showing file 2 where is the file 2 actually it's in the working directory working directory where is file 1 Sorry, where is file two? It is in working Frame, directory. Uh, yeah. Working Tell directory me. only. Working directory only because we just created it. We just made the file. I didn't add it. If you want to yes. confirm it this way, also you can do. Git status untracked again because Git know there is a file, but it will not track it until you add it. So yes. what should I do? I want answers from you git add file name so yeah. now do the status yes changes to be committed means git is tracking it you need to commit it how to commit what should i do now by the way where is the file now where is file two it's in staging area where is file one where is file one File is in local. Local repository. We have committed it, right? Yes, 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 yes. Haven't we committed it? Git ls files. Now it it is also there. File two also came because it's in staging. See, file one is already committed, right? So now commit these changes also. Git commit minus m. Let's say second file. When you run this command, whatever in the staging area will be committed get status okay working tree is clean now yes both files where are both the files <coughs> no, it's in local repo local repo now they are ready to be pushed to remote if you want okay so yeah that's about the uh, architecture how you move your changes from local repository to staging area staging area to uh, sorry working directory to staging area staging area to local repository so now we'll take up an another interesting scenario till now we were creating a new file but it's not uh, uh, always about creating a new file right you may also have to modify the existing files correct so how to how to modify an existing file means already file is there you need to go and make some changes let's see Let's suppose I want to modify file one. Okay, maybe I'm adding a new line is added. Some dummy lines I'm adding. You may write some meaningful scripts if you know, or lab programs if you know, just any anything you can. Okay, so I made some change. So what will be Git status telling us now? See, change is not staged see it is not telling you untracked because it's not a new file file is already there change is not staged on file one means file is already there in local repository but some changes some modifications were not staged means where are those modifications not staged unstaged changes means where are those changes unstaged means not staged not added to be added so where are those unstaged changes? In the working directory. Exactly, it is in the working directory, right? Unstaged changes, to be added changes, not added changes means, yes, changes are there in the working directory, right? Again, the same story. What is the same story? So this time we don't have to add, right? Only have to commit. 
you have to add it. One second. Yeah, you said that you we, we can't uh, move it directly from working directory to local repo. It has to go through the staging area. I didn't get you. Yeah, that's why. See, whether it is a new file or whether it is a modification, Git works with respect to changes. So what you have to do again, git add this file one.txt, then git commit those changes, minus m, some message. You have to add and commit, whether it is a new file or whether it is a um, like a you know, modify only the changes you have to add and commit. That's how git works. Or else, because it's not a new file, you can add and commit together, meaning git minus a means add and commit. Sorry, git commit minus a minus m. Got it, everyone. You can add and commit together because it's not a new file. It's a new file. If it is a new file, it will show you like untracked. Okay, untracked means new file. It's not at all staged. It's not at all version controlled. But if it is a modification, it shows like not staged. Understand the difference. Have you understood the difference? See here, not staged. That could be also another interview question. What is meant by not unstaged changes and what is meant by untracked? Not staged means? Unstaged. What is the difference between untracked and unstaged? Untracked means totally new file. It's not at all there in the staging area and not at all there in the local repository. Whereas unstaged means file is there. File is in the local repository, but only modifications are unstaged. Got the difference, everyone? Karen Reddy, Vinayak, Partha, every one of you got it? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So you should identify by seeing this message, you should actually identify the total context. So untracked means you have to add and commit separately. If it is unstaged, you may add and commit separately or else you can commit in uh, all together once also. Okay, you can do either ways for unstaged changes. Am I making sense? You may do it this way or this way also fine, but for untracked, you have to go only with this way, right? I believe it's clear for everyone. So which method we shall use now? Anything you can use, you tell me which one we should go with. Ma'am, what uh, error will get if we try to just commit without adding the changes? We are committing and adding. Do you see minus A flag? Add and commit, git to commit minus A, minus M. A means add and commit. This you can use only for unstaged changes, not for untracked changes. Got it? It's not directly committing, adding and committing only. Okay. File one modified. Right. So now if you check the status, working tree should be clean. Perfect. Now the modifications also are in the local repository. And also, like I said, whenever you commit, commit ID will be generated. If you want to see those commit IDs, like I told you, Git will be maintaining logs. Git log. See, three times we committed. Every commit will generate this commit ID, huge commit ID. And see here, the author name here, I didn't give any name, so it was showing like this. You can put your name also. Timestamp, which is very important. Wednesday, June 9, 8, 57, 37. I mean, uh, seconds also it was showing. And then the commit message. So that you know, okay, this commit is made by so-and-so person and the, the timestamp, right? And you don't need to remember the whole commit ID. Only first seven characters you can use to see what is in that commit. Like git to show first seven characters. You can, it will show you what changes happened in that commit. So in the 780, what changes happened? Yes, file one, this line is added. I mean, this, sorry, this plus symbol, this one is added. Okay, this is added in third commit. So plus symbol shows which were added during that commit. 
maybe if you want to see okay what changes happened so and so commit this is how you can see so git log will show you the history of commits suppose i don't want to see this much detail i just want simple log git log one line one line means only the short log first seven characters commit message if you want to see git show this mess this commit id uh, it will show you what are the changes happening so this is another command which will help you to see the complete log or else if you want to see log of a particular file also you can do git log file one dot txt see only the commits happened on this file will be shown this way right so that's about moving your changes from working directory to staging from staging to local repository and the checking the commit ids and seeing the log we have many other interesting scenarios coming up uh, can i proceed or anything should i repeat or any confusions you can feel free to respond but I'm git log minus minus online uh, what that command online, online. yeah git yes. log one line command will show you just the brief log brief log means simple log not in detail just the first seven characters commit message three commit ids right it was showing the first three commit ids three commit, commit ids commit message okay Mary. right okay, Mary. right Please keep your Please voice keep your echoing. voice is echoing. Someone unmuted. Please keep muted. Requesting everyone to keep muted. Thank you. Okay. Um, yeah. Shall we take up the next scenario? ls git ls files okay yeah let us uh, create or else let's go to this file file 2 okay i want to make some modifications to this file 2 i'm just opening in this folder okay just go here let's say okay on this file 2 file 2 is already committed file right i just want to make some change a new line save it okay now tell me one thing is this file having some file 2 is having some unstaged changes or not is yes, file having some unstaged change unstaged change means in the working directory but it is not a new file unstaged okay fine suppose if you want to see unstaged changes of any file git diff file 2 git diff file name what it will show it will show you the unstaged changes okay see here you can see this one this is the sorry not this one this plus yeah a new line this is the unstaged change am i correct yeah so it will show you with the plus symbol if you add any line if you remove any line it will show with the minus symbol so this is the uh, like a uh, unstaged change okay fine it is unstaged uh, I want to stage it. So, okay. Is this file having any unstaged changes now? I want answers from you because we have learned this one already. Is this file having any unstaged changes now? No. No. Is this file having any unstaged changes? Any unstaged changes? No. Yeah? No. No. Yeah? No. no. So do git status see it's not having any unstated changes at this point if you do git diff no output because no unstated changes okay perfect uh, is it having staged changes or not is the file having staged changes or not staged means which are in the staging area <laughs> yeah, yes ma'am yeah yes is having staged changes because it was showing changes to be committed it's having staged changes to see the staged changes of any file 
get defaced okay yes it's having the same line is staged now so yes it's having staged changes perfect okay fine i'm going to modify this file once again okay i have modified it again now tell me is this file having some unstated changes or not uh, yes ma'am yes is yes. this file having unstated changes or not guru raj gokul everyone yes ma'am yes 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 so git status yes the file is having some unstaged changes this one unstaged changes okay perfect now if you do git a diff yes unstaged change this line is unstaged is this file having staged changes yes or no second yes. line is staged do you see yes ma'am yeah second line is staged a new line is staged here third line also shown means the same file is having some changes staged some changes unstaged is it possible or not because see second line i have added i have written a second line then added so it is staged i have written third line but i didn't add it so unstaged means the same file can have staged and unstaged changes at the same time at that point if you see git status see it will show you changes to be committed means it's telling okay file 2 is in the staging area this says that yes the file 2 is in the staging area but here it says changes not staged means here the file this message is telling you that okay the file is in the working directory so don't get confused it's quite possible simple logic i have added second i have written second line then added so yes it is showing in staged area then i have written third line but i didn't add it so third line is in the working directory so this is quite possible the same file could be in both staging area and working directory at the same time so don't get confused this is quite possible this could be again another interview question is it possible to have the same file both in staging directory and working directory quite possible yes this could be the scenario this could be the use case yes we have made some changes to terraform config file and added them. later on made some changes but i didn't add those to staging So obviously the file will be in staging and working directory. Interesting, isn't it? Yes or no? Understood first of all, or is it confusing? I don't want anyone to get confused or lost. I want everyone to be the clear with the concepts. So now, now we have to add again and then commit, right? So yes, that both will course. be gone. Now you have to add it separately. You can do. I mean, file two. I'm sorry. it's a file to git to commit the file you can do separately or else because it's not a new file i could also do it git to commit add and commit minus a means add and commit i could do this way also because it's not a new file so which one should i use should i use separately or this one uh just use the same one ma'am yeah so because i can go with a single command i would take advantage of writing a single command file modifications learned okay git status yes perfect so that's how you have different scenarios you can play around with those things so today's assignment is first of all do everything whatever we did in the class simple two linux commands were taught cd mkdir and ls okay those are very simple just day by day we'll get used to linux environment okay and i'll take you to thrill uh, to shell scripting also so first do hands on on whatever we did to definitely 100% do the hands on maybe you might be already working in git you might be an expert in git but still okay let's let's have a kind of revision refresh the concepts okay that's my request so that the training will be fruitful do everything what we did in the class okay whether it is 10 commands or 20 commands go through listen the recording once again understand the architecture master the architecture keep the architecture in your mind 
uh, tomorrow you should be answering without opening without looking at the architecture diagram okay so that's uh, uh, for today execute all these commands understand them thoroughly okay from here on to do git and you play on multiple directories you do git add git commit vice versa try different scenarios and play with those okay any questions anything you are stuck up i'm going to create a whatsapp group with all the enrolled students you can put your questions you can put your uh, completed work also screenshots in that so that we get encouraged we get motivated throughout the course okay you people can get together uh, to get or uh, stay motivated till the end because see you may be losing motivation in the middle so to avoid that stay together whenever you do hands on whenever you completed the work just post them saying that okay this is done that will encourage others also to do it don't hesitate to interact in the group right so that um, is all where can i found this recording video madam yes recording videos will also be provided okay yeah i'll share them to your email id from today yeah, yeah, just there? share me that email because uh, some things i have skipped that one firstly i mean how to add uh, suppose if you are having any file like uh, uh, text file how to add to that uh, git uh, so that's what i missed that one madam definitely every day recordings will be posted so that you can go through them and uh, grasp them whoever enrolled uh, will be receiving the video to your email id whoever not it you can register and get enrolled so any more questions oh. all right then yeah we'll close here today and we'll get to the topics again tomorrow uh, bye everyone have a great day see you all tomorrow thank you Thank you.